Hi everyone, welcome to session AD. So a desktop and extensible thin client for mainframers. So pleased to have uh, Lenny here to, to talk about this. We've just been having a bit of a chat before the, the meeting started and there's gonna be a couple of exclusive things uh, announced. Um, if you could leave your questions till the end, happy to pick them up, uh, drop them into the meeting chat and we'll, we'll do them at the end. So um, I'm gonna say over to you, Lenny, have a good one. All right, thank you. Well, hello, hello everyone. Um, our presentation for today headlines with a single chili along the GSC chili scale. So I'll be starting from the bottom and working my way upwards. Uh, my name is Lenny and I'm a co core Zoe developer with an active role in the community. And I'm also the scrum master for our rocket software development team. The purpose of this demo is to showcase a little bit about what the Zoe desktop is, what are some of our core apps, and what it means to the mainframe industry and open source community as a whole. I suspect most of you listening know a bit about what Zoe is, especially if you had a chance to tune into some of the previous lovely presentations. Uh, so I'll try to be respectful with your time. But for those folk who don't, Zoe is an integrated and extensible open source framework for ZOS. Zoe, like Mac OS or Windows, for example, comes with a set of APIs and OS capabilities out of the box with applications built in. Some applications I'll show today aren't open and don't come out of the box, but are built on the desktop. So as the mainframe industry continues to mature, it becomes difficult to maintain the same uh, levels and quality of system admins, retain working knowledge of legacy architectures, and find new talent that knows the old tricks. Zoe's goal is to offer a modern interface to interact with ZOS similar to what one could experience on cloud platforms today. A good question may be, who are the intended users? Well, one of those users is me. I'm not a mainframe expert, and I lack the years of experience in this industry to know the ins and outs of what every ISPF panel does, you know, TSO commands like the back of my hand. Uh, I also can't program in Rex, for example. So, you know, then you understandably exclaim to me, who is this mumbling buffoon up here on the main stage talking about Z? Well, I do know the fundamentals of programming. I know web development. I know REST APIs. I know open source. And I've learned a lot about Z during my time developing for them uh, and uh, for Rocket Software and for them for Zoe. Um, and I can work with the tools and environments that modern programming has to offer me, which means together we can bring ZOS to the center stage for newcomers decrease costs for maintenance, day-to-day -day business, and new talent, you know, drive adoption for the future. Zoe is also intended for experienced admins and system programmers. Not everyone wants radical change, and that's okay. Zoe's got your back, and its mission is about keeping what works and extending it, as well as adding completely new features, which will power the uh, healthcare agencies, banks, insurance companies, governments, and every other major data-centered industry for decades to come. Zoe is a growing community and consists of more components than just the desktop we'll see today. But if you're at all interested, I would highly recommend visiting zoe.org and checking out our many community channels, for example, like Slack or GitHub for help in setting up developing your own company's apps, help with onboarding your company's own app. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, feature requests, bug reports, you know, so much more. So we know what Zoe is about, but how in the world is it accomplishing the things that I said? What are those things? Well, the desktop provides a web UI containing a number of apps and features with functions which make COS more accessible and intuitive. For today, we'll be discussing four apps 
that come with bait sewing. There are more than four and many more that don't come out of the box, but today's showcase includes the VT terminal, a mainframe emulator for SSH and Telnet, the Zoe editor, which is an IDE-like experience for interacting with files and data sets on the mainframe. Third, the TN3270 terminal, which emulates the functions and look of the IBM 3270. And finally, the JES Explorer, uh, an application used to, to view jobs, download job details, um, uh, you know, purge, et cetera. These four apps are open source. The next two apps do not come with base Zoe and are instead part of the Rocket utility pack for Zoe. First is the file manager, which helps us manage our USS and MBS data, akin to, uh, say, an experience with Windows Explorer or Max Finder. Uh, and the second one is the process manager which helps us view and organize USS process details. These two apps come for free when you buy Rocket support for Zoe. If you're interested about that, reach out to me via email uh, or the provided link. Anyhow, <clears throat> let's get to the mischievous part, the demo. Um, I'm boring myself already hearing me talk. Um, we may have a few questions already. I'll love your questions, but let's wait till the end uh, and then we can start answering them. So let's begin by logging into the desktop using our mainframe credentials. And from the start, we are greeted with our desktop view and some regularly scheduled programming in the bottom section. I hope no one missed that lukewarm pun. I thought of it late last night and my mom really liked it. <laughs> we see our pinned apps in the bottom left. Uh, we see desktop utilities in our app tray to the bottom right, things like notifications, um, system widgets. date, time, our desktop version. There are many out there. Uh, these are just um, Oh, yes. And then the list, of course, of the installed apps. Beginning with the system widgets, uh, we have a languages menu to apply system wide English, Chinese, French, Japanese, Russian, and German to the whole desktop and to the apps as well, given they support it. And if they don't, English is the default. And we're looking for help in translating more languages too. So please, if you're interested, reach out on Slack. Uh, we absolutely love free labor and all the interns have fleed or been killed off. For legal purposes, that was a joke. We also have support for uh, changing your mainframe password here. Yeah, especially important in today's age of rotating IT and security policies. And how about this fresh personalization menu? Uh, let me go ahead and upload some wallpaper to customize. And maybe I'll change the theme color. Maybe I'm on a tablet. And I want to increase the element size. Uh, I'm not, so I'll change it back. Um, anyhow, now let's begin the app showcase. So starting with uh, our first app, um, 
let's launch the editor. The editor allows me to view files and folders uh, and data sets. If we right click a folder node, we can refresh uh, its content. We can uh, change its Unix permissions on the go. Um, recursively too, which is so lovely to do, you know, with the right click mouse wielding plebeian such as myself. Uh, we can change the mode or change permissions. Um, we can change the encoding. We can uh, view properties. Here, why, why don't I, I show some of these things instead of talking about it? Um, so here's like the permissions menu, for example, and our recursive option. Here we can view the properties and it's gonna have our USS properties there. Let's, um, I don't know, let's open up a file. Bugs. Let's look at bugs. Okay. Um, we can expand files and folders, of course, in our tree view. Um, we also have a preferences menu. Uh, oh, yeah. Look, firstly, we have our languages menu. And you get syntax highlighting for tons of languages. And this list is extensible too. So this one's just a dot text file. Let me open up maybe some code, maybe um, maybe a shell script. Yeah, there we go. Um, uh, <laughs> I was probably writing some code here to make large stuff on COS and see if things broke. <laughs> Monkey style. Uh, open the, let's open the preferences menu and uh, you get editor settings we can change. We have all the capabilities of a modern editor. Exhibit A, I'll change the font size to be more pleasing for a demo. Um, there we go. And uh, now let's say you hate this, right? Give me my USS, you know, CLI, give me my SSH terminals. And there is nothing wrong with that. This is where the VT terminal comes in. Here we can view our host port and type. I will log in as myself. Apologies for the slowness. I'm doing this with the one hand here. Um, and here we can view our USS as mirrored from a different context. So same stuff. Um, Maybe I'll go ahead and delete one of these files. Um, this file I made yesterday. And then we will refresh and we won't see this file on the left-hand side. Um, and if we navigate, uh, We can go to our terminal, we'll create a file, or I don't know, we'll do a folder. New folder. There's our new folder. So, uh, you know, we've, we've got other menu functions as well. 
Uh, we also have a search filter. That's really nice. Quick search. Um, you know, we can use hotkeys as well to traverse the tabs. Um, you know, we can something like this. You know, we can close all all of the all of the modern IDE like stuff, except um, we are programming uh, on the mainframe, but we are taking advantage of what uh, modern interfaces have to offer us today. And the editor is a community project, Terminal is a community project, and contributors from all over add code, whether you be a frantically stressed student, a frantically stressed employee, a frantically stressed system programmer, or a GSE presenter. Now on to data sets. Um, oops. Let's see. Um, yeah, let's use the editor. We've got multiple uh, ways to view, but let's use the editor. And we'll search up some JCL data sets and their members. Let's open up this one, for example. We can right click to view its properties as well, similar from USS. Uh, for example, this properties view tells us the record length and record format, block size, and all of those data set characteristics, some of which are not easily accessible in every panel everywhere, but they are here. A future update might have an accurate size conversion between blocks, cylinders, tracks, and bytes, you know, depending on your uh, uh, you know, direct access storage device model. Um, maybe a user isn't completely sure what it means for a data set to be blocked. That's fine. We've got a hyperlink here. This will lead to an IBM help page that can assist with that. Uh, however, similarly, as with my previous example, let's say you hate this, right? Maybe you like doing things the way you're used to, or maybe it's missing a critical feature for you. Uh, it's an ongoing free app in development after all. And in that case, you want to 100% reach out to these channels. Um, however, if pestering us and uh, sending us dead animals in the mail or whatever the hell Jared Leto did to his co-stars in 2016's The Justice League. If doing that isn't enough for you, for your enterprise grade feature or attention requirements, then exclusive 24 seven Zoe support from Rocket Software is available as well. Um, it's on Google if you need it, Rocket support for Zoe. Um, anyway. Maybe you can do things faster on ISPF, or at least ISPF is what you prefer because that's what you're comfortable with. That leads us to our third app, the TN3270. And here, if we open up our settings at the top, we can view similar to the virtual terminal, the host, the port, other settings like code page, I'll go ahead and log in. And now we are in ISPF. I could, for example, go to 3.4 to view my data sets. All right, let me get my second hand here. We'll do a paste. Beautiful. Oops. Sorry, using a touchpad here. Um, 
anyhow. So similar views, right? Similar views. Um, and uh, we've also got cool things like hotkey support. Um, so I'm not an ISPF wizard. My capabilities go so far as browsing, you know, editing, and occasionally if I can wake up my three remaining brain cells on a Tuesday morning, analyzing. So I can't showcase all of what TN3270 has to offer, but the vast chunk of what we can do in a 3270 emulator, we can do in our TN3270 app. So yeah, if this isn't enough for you, I do have an answer. Rocket support for Zoe also offers access to the Rocket Terminal emulator. It's not part of my demo because I'm here to represent Zoe, not just plug my cool Rocket merch, but anyhow, it's out there and it's on Google. Uh, there's also this lovely app called API Catalog. Uh, yeah, th this one, wasn't meant to be part of my demo, but it is. it comes from the API mediation layer team, which you may have heard about in previous presentation. If you attended, for example, from Jakob or Andre, um, I'm not demoing today, but it's a great way to view the API ML connected running services and diagnose and troubleshoot Zoe problems, along with browsing Swagger doc code examples and other helpful things for uh, uh, for the extensible APIs that Zoe offers. For the final app of this, or uh, the final app of the uh, core, the core apps, the out of the box apps, let's try to do something with jobs. So we'll go ahead and navigate back to the editor and search for a job I can run. Um, while a working feature in uh, V1, it will be fixed and working for V2. Job submission from the editor. Um, this menu becomes available and you can click Submit Job. And uh, once we submit a job, we can then open up our fourth app which is our Jez Explorer. We'll use this to browse my jobs. So along with submitting jobs via the editor, I can also submit here. I'll, uh, I'll browse my tree. Let's do one of these. And uh, for example, I can view and download my system or job message log. I'll download all, and it puts things in a convenient archive for me to view later. Pretty great. I can uh, right click and select get JCL. which prints me the uh, job input. We could then re-edit and submit. Um, you know, I can, uh, once a job is submitted, I mean, we, we, can, we can submit this. I'll get a notification here. And now you see I've got four here in my tree view. Um, and I could also, if a job was running like this one, I could purge or delete the job. Um, I don't want to do this now. But that is the Jez Explorer. So we're tackling it, tackling things from many angles, uh, many workflows along the mainframe ecosystem. And for the final two apps of our showcase, we have the Rocket Utility Pack, 
beginning with the process manager. You guys can see it, but I've got a little Zoom UI hiding it there at the top. Uh, so in the top header section, we are viewing the SDSF query data about our, about our system resource usage. On the top right, we have more information about our system, and we could specify our query for viewing USS processes. So let me do like, I don't know, I'll use a special character. And now, as you can see, these are all processes for TS6 and all. Uh, for example, when we right-click on one of these active processes and view more info in a details view, um, let's get... I don't think any of these are active right now. No. So let's view a more active one. Maybe like this one. There we go. We're going to be seeing things like CPU utilization and memory usage. The top right allows us to use a different view for processes as well. If you'll give a second to look at this. Got our zip usage there, for example. Very cool. We have who started the process as well. And the start date and time. We've got our uh, view right here. So when, when we click on this different view, it is now a tree view. And uh, the tree view is great because it's showing the child-parent relationships. So we can collapse the tree here, et cetera. And that's great, right? Because um, that's tying, uh, you know, parent processes and process together. And that's, gr that's easy viewing on a snazzy app UI may be a little tougher in USS. Open the settings menu to be greeted with some customization options. We can control, for example, how often the server refreshes. It's a must have. It's a must have if you care about USS uh, or monitoring your system resources in general. Now we saw that, and now the latest app for today, so the last app we have is the Zoe File Manager. And here's the kicker. Uh, this app has not been released yet. We intend on releasing this quarter, but you, my fellow GSC viewer, patiently watching and waiting, <laughs> are one of the first to sneak a peek at it. Actually, let's open it up on uh, on a different system. It's literally in development. So this this version of the app on this desktop is actually uh, newer. Um, and uh, well, where do we begin? Um, Similar to what we saw with the editor, right? We've got split experiences here for USS and MVS. So in USS, I can do the same, you know, create, read, update, delete actions we saw in the editor, but there is a few new exclusive options for the rocket support for Zoe users that have these two apps. For example, we've got archiving support. And 
.packs, .tar, and .zip formats. Another cool feature is the multi-views. We can click on our split view button here, and we can type in, uh, so on, on, we're now on our right-hand side view. The, the left-hand side doesn't change because these are the same directories from start, but we're on our right-hand side view, and let's view the MVS side of things. Um, I'll navigate to my user, uh, my home data sets. And uh, when we, um, I could click and drag from my MVS view and copy it into my USS view. So here, let's do this. Right, on our left-hand side, we've got a USS view. So I'm dragging, clicking, dragging the data set. And we can do a copy operation. And the data set gets converted to a folder and the members get converted into files. So let's view the data set contents. We went over to a different tab. So terminal disconnected for security. I can use the editor, of course, to view my data set, but I think it's a more intriguing showcase to show it using an ISPF. So we can see the change. Um, what was it? It was SZW. Oops. W E E X E C. There we go. So I'll just view one of the members here. This is my data set member, right? Um, and now I'll view in USS from our file manager we should have a new sz folder there it is right here and these are files that are in uss so for example i'll open it up in the editor And what is the content of the file? It's the content of our data set member. So brilliant. <laughs> that's great. Uh, that, that's perfect. Um, and this was just, you know, one kind of case of um, approaching using ZOS in different ways with different apps for different purposes. And um, that is it for the app showcase. Uh, the things I didn't talk about for today is uh, kind of some of the tech behind it. Um, these apps are, uh, well, these and you, your own, you can develop your apps using Angular, React and Node.js with REST APIs and support for TypeScript, JavaScript, and C. Um, we have our lovely ZSS, which is a backend uh, for uh, exchanging data in a secure uh, way from the UI to ZOS. Um, and Another great thing is we can onboard existing apps using iframes. 
So iframes are really cool because uh, it say you're a software vendor uh, and you've got your own app. It's a web app, you know, you, um, well, you know, there's many categories of web apps and you can have a very easy time onboarding an app potentially with an iframe. So I'll give an example of that. The JS Explorer that we were looking at is an iframe, which means that um, it is more or less a web page inside this app. Um, I guess steering off the course a little bit of, of my demo here, but we, we, could, we could look. Um, so right here. You see the main component of our Jez Explorer is this iframe. And while it's pointing to one that is hosted in Zoe, the iframe can of course, you know, be any iframe. So it doesn't have to be natively Zoe built apps. And that's really important. And a lot of vendors have been taking advantage of that. For more information, visit zoe.org. There are conformant apps on there that uh, are iframe apps. Um, there are many, many apps for different Zoe components, um, but they are all there and it's all really cool stuff. Really cool stuff. And let's see, I think that is, I think that is the end of my list here. So let me um, open it up for questions now. Thank you so much, Lenny. If anyone has any questions, please pop them in the chat. I think Lenny mentioned it, the deck will be uploaded if it hasn't been already onto the GSE agenda. And um, there's the Slack contact details for them if you have questions after the session. I'm seeing no questions in the chat right now. No, none at all. Okay, cool. Well, that that's that's good. That means that either uh, people fell asleep or I had some good info here um, that that covered some of the some of the basics. Yeah, let's go with that latter option there, Lenny. I'm sure it was all good info. Certainly was uh, was interesting to see the stuff that you you presented. Um, so thank you for your time. Thank you, everyone. Uh, there's one more session to go for today in the app dev track. So come back for Rudy and uh, exploring the mainframe with Zoe as a presentation. And don't forget, there is Meredith Stowell at the end with a keynote um, from IBM around accelerating application modernization. So thanks once again, Lenny. Thank you to all the attendees. Have a great virtual GSE, what's left of it, and uh, speak soon. Thank you. Bye for now.